Disney World is a great place to go on vacation, but there are some adjustments that Disney could make to improve guest satisfaction. Now, I'm not talking about big ideas that would take years to complete or require massive investments. Just five realistic things that Disney can easily fix. It's coming up right now on... Number five. The Disney dining plans are back, and even free dining has returned for select dates. The regular Disney dining plan includes table service meals, of course. It's a nice way to make your vacation at Walt Disney World feel a little more all-inclusive. If you stick to just what your table service meal includes, you won't have to pay out of pocket. You simply redeem your dining credits, but it doesn't cover the gratuity for your server. At the end of your meal, your server will bring you the bill with the cash total on it. You only have to pay for things you ordered that are not included in the dining plan. For me, this is rare. The total is provided to help you determine how much of a tip you should leave. It would be so much easier if the gratuity was included as well. I personally never carry cash, especially in the theme parks. I'm always afraid I'll lose my wallet on a ride or leave it somewhere. And charging your server's gratuity to your credit card or magic band doesn't seem right either. I'm sure Disney doesn't include gratuity so that the cost of the dining plan seems cheaper. But I think Disney should borrow an idea from the cruise line industry where you have the option to prepay your gratuities in advance for included meals. On a cruise ship, you simply get up and walk away when you're finished. All you have to do is show up and have a great time. I find that most menu items are similarly priced, so unless you want to split hairs on the total cost of the meal, a server should still make out on a decent tip. And in some cases, they may do better if the customer would otherwise be a lousy tipper. The whole idea behind the Disney dining plan is to make it convenient for guests. Disney knows you're going to leave a tip, so why not just include it from the beginning? Number 4. The trend of limited or even no housekeeping began across the hotel industry during the pandemic, but now it's becoming the industry norm. I expect more from Walt Disney World, a company that prides itself on excellent guest service and often uses terms like the Disney difference to demonstrate how they are better than other resorts. To be fair, Universal Orlando has a similar policy and Royal Caribbean has cut housekeeping back to just once per day. But when Disney cut daily housekeeping to every other day at its value and moderate resorts, it made national news, as it often does. And housekeeping is limited to just new towels and trash removal. I believe the term for this type of service now is skimpflation. Daily housekeeping is offered at the Disney Deluxe Resorts, which often hover around $750 per night, but room and ticket packages at a moderate hotel can easily be $5,000 or more. For that kind of money, it would be nice if the bed was made. Being pampered is part of the fun of staying in a hotel. It's time to bring back daily housekeeping at Disney World's moderate hotels. Number 3. In recent years, the Orlando theme parks have been closing earlier than in the pre-pandemic years. While Magic Kingdom often stays open till 10 or 11 p.m., Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios often close around 9, and Animal Kingdom can close as early as 6 p.m. on some nights. Universal Orlando is the same. Sometimes they close both parks before 8 p.m. Epcot used to open in phases, first Future World and then World Showcase would open at 11 a.m. and often stay open until 10 p.m. or later. Today, the entire park opens at once. I would be okay with a phased opening if it means the parks could stay opened a little bit later. Now, the only way to stay in Epcot later at night is to stay in a deluxe hotel that includes a Monday night stay. Being in the parks at night, especially in the summer months when afternoon temps are in the high 90s, is the only escape from the heat park goers have and I think parks are more fun at night anyway. Number two. Remember when you had to be online at 6 a.m. 60 days in advance to make your dining reservations for Walt Disney World? Especially if you wanted Be Our Guest restaurant. Today, you can frequently get into Be Our Guest as a walk-up. Table service dining at Disney just isn't as popular as it used to be. I still recommend making reservations 60 days in advance, but there is a lot more availability than in years past. Today, quick service dining is where it's at, and I think this is for two reasons. One, quick service dining meals are good. Disney has really upped its game here. And two, now that guests are paying for Genie Plus, they feel like they don't have enough time for a lengthy table service meal, or it might conflict with a Genie Plus return time. 
This means quick service restaurants are crowded these days, and it is very hard to find a place to sit. Disney has experimented with different ideas to help people find seats. A few years ago, Disney tested out a system where guests would enter a queue after they got their food. A cast member with a radio headset would talk to other cast members who were out scouting seats. I didn't like having to wait in another line, but I knew I was going to get a table. At the Connections Eatery at Epcot, cast members were only allowing people to sit at tables who had trays of food. This is loosely enforced today. Disney needs to find a way to provide seating so guests are not meandering around with trays of food and balancing soft drinks with no lids because Disney banned lids on cups, but that's another show. Number 1 I'm aware that Disney Genie Plus is a very controversial topic, and I'm not here to say we should eliminate it and go back to paper Fastpass tickets, but I know I'm not the only one who would love that. Disney could make a small change that would make a big difference. Why do we have two terms that describe basically the same thing? Disney Genie Plus and Lightning Lane. Have you heard a cast member trying to explain the difference between the two, not to mention individual attraction selection and virtual queues? And while we're at it, Photo Pass and Memory Maker too. This is straight from the Department of Redundancy department. I think they should just call the whole thing Lightning Lane. Ultimately, that's what guests want. No one is buying Genie Plus for the Photo Pass lenses or the in-park audio features. Call it Lightning Lane and tell guests they get some free perks with it. And while we're at it, individual attraction selection doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, and it only refers to a handful of attractions. Can't that just be absorbed into Lightning Lane at this point? I seriously think the reason some people don't visit Walt Disney World is because Genie Plus feels overwhelming to them. I'm sure these five things won't solve every issue, but I think there are some realistic changes here that Disney could make to enhance guest experiences at Walt Disney World. Have something that Disney needs to fix? Do you agree or disagree with my list? Let me know your thoughts. I'll be in the comments following along. I'm Darren from OrlandoParksGuy.com. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to my channel for even more content on Orlando theme parks and cruises. And now, here comes a video that has been chosen just for you.